Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, we still have three capacitors. They're the same size again. We are going to connect them in series, but the difference now is that two of them are charged instead of only one of them. So what will be the end result? What will be the charge on each of the three capacitors when it's all said and done? When everything gets back to steady state, all the charges have moved around, what will be Q1, Q2, and Q3? Well, let's take a look and see what we think is going to happen. We're connecting it positive to negative. Since two capacitors have charges, there's two different ways in which we can connect them. We could have turned this one around and had positive to positive, but on our first example like this, we're going to connect positive to negative. I guess we should do an example where we turn one of them around. What that means then is that one of these positive charges is going to be repelled by the presence of these other positive charges and it's going to be attracted to these negative charges over here, negating one of those negative charges. That means there's one less negative charge there. One of these positive charges is going to be repelled over here, which means that one of these positive charges is going to be repelled, moving in this direction. And that means this side will become negative, this positive charge will come around over here and negate one of these negative charges. And this process will continue until everything gets to steady state. So, what will be the end result? In order to figure that out, we're going to have to add the voltages around the circuit, starting over here, going across this first capacitor from negative to positive, that is V1, going across the second capacitor from negative to positive, that would be plus V2, and going across the third capacitor from positive to negative would be minus V3, and that adds up to zero, which means that V1 plus V2 equals V3. Then we realize again that the relationship here on the capacitor, we can say that capacitance by definition is charge divided by voltage, which means that we can write voltage is equal to charge divided by capacitance. That means we can take this equation right here and write it as Q over C for each of the three voltages. This becomes Q1 over C1, Q1 being, of course, the charge at the very end, at steady state on capacitor 1, plus Q2 divided by C2, which is equal to Q3 divided by C3. Next, we realize that in this example, all the capacitances are the same. Since C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C3, we can write this as Q1 plus Q2 is equal to Q3. And we still need to find some other relationships between Q1 and Q2, and Q3 as well. Well, first of all, here we can see that whatever charge leaves C2 will end up on C3, which means that Q3 is equal to the change on C2, which means how much C2 started with minus how much it ends up with. So the charge on Q3 is simply the difference between how much C2 had on it minus how much is remaining at the end. That difference moved to C3, and since Q2 is equal to 80 microcoulombs, we can say that Q3 is equal to 80 minus Q... Oh, did I say 1? I should have said 2 here, and that, of course, that's 2. All right. What about the relationship between C1 and C2? Well, what we can see is that whatever ends up on C3 will be subtracted from C1. So that means Q1 is equal to with what Q1 started with, which is big Q1, minus whatever ends up on Q3, so minus Q3. Again, just to make sure we understand what's going on is, for every charge going on to C3, one charge will come around and go on to C1, and, oh, wait a minute, notice that we're actually subtracting. Whatever goes on C3 is subtracted from C1, so we got to be careful here. Um, Q1 is going to be what we started with, minus what gets added to C3, which of course that would be subtraction. We're good to go. That's a good equation. Mm, we got to be very careful. All right, 
We now have Q1 in terms of Q3. We have Q2 in terms of Q3. I could solve this for Q2 in terms of Q3. Let's do that. So we have Q2 is equal to 80 minus Q3. And Q3 is related to Q1 through this equation. So let's try that. So Q3 is equal to Q big Q1 minus little Q1. So that equation came from here. So I can replace that here. So this is equal to 80 minus Q3. And Q3 is big Q1 minus Q1. Big Q1 minus little Q1. And big Q1 is 40. So we have 80 minus 40 minus Q1, which means that Q2 is equal to 80 minus 40, which is 40 minus Q1. All right. I have all kinds of relationships now between Q1, Q2, and Q3. I should have plenty there to do what I need to do, which is take this equation and solve that for one of the three variables. I now have Q1, Q2, and Q3, but I can replace Q2 and Q3 by some relationship there. So I have Q1 plus Q2. Q2 is 40 minus Q1. 40 minus Q1. And that equals Q3. And Q3 is, in terms of Q1, hmm, that would be 40 minus Q1. 40 minus Q1. All right. So now move all the Q1s over to one side. So I have Q1 minus Q1 plus Q1. So I have Q1 minus Q1 plus Q1 is equal to 40, when I bring this across, minus 40, which means that Q1 is equal to 0. How about that? It turns out that in this case, Q1 will end up with no charge whatsoever. At first you might think, wow, is that really true? Can that happen? Well, let's stay with it and see what the others one, others will become. So now we have Q2, which is 40 minus Q1. So Q2, which is 40 minus Q1. And since Q1 is equal to 0, I say that Q2 is equal to 40 microcoulombs. And then going to Q3, Q3 is 80 minus Q2. So Q3 is equal to 80 minus Q2, which means it's 80 minus 40, or Q3 is equal to 40 microcoulombs. So here we have the three equations telling us the values for Q1, Q2, and Q3. Now, how do we know this is correct? Well, there's two ways of looking at it. One way is that, hmm, well, we go back to the original equation right here. Is this equation correct? Well, let's see. Let's do a check. Q1 divided by C1. So Q1 is 0 divided by C1, which is 2, plus Q2 divided by C2, which is 40, divided by 2. Is that indeed equal to Q3 divided by C3, which is 40 divided by 2? And sure enough, by inspection, you can see that that is equal to each other. It may not feel good because you go back and say, well, I have 40 microcoulombs to start with and 80 microcoulombs here, and I end up with 40 and 40. How can 120 coulombs become 80 coulombs? Well, again, the reason why we don't expect that the results will add up to the original charge that you had is because you're connecting the positive end of one capacitor to the negative end of the other capacitor. And because of that, there'll be some negation of charge. So the sum of the three together will not add up to the original total charge you end up with. You also can say, well, then should it add up to the difference between those two? And the answer is no, that will only be the case if there's only two capacitors. Since there are three capacitors, there's a different arrangement in which the charges get distributed. So it turns out in this case, you cannot say that the sum of the, the three charges at the end will add up to the difference between the two. It will not add up to the sum between the two. You simply have to trust that the equations you use here, realizing that when you add up all the voltages, they add up to zero. And then if you take the relationship between voltage, charge, and capacitance, and then if you plug in your final values, into this equation as a check. If it comes out, 
you're probably okay saying, I did the right thing and I got the right values for the final charge. And that's how it's done.